moving to topic of economics business cycle before we even start discussing something in granular details let's have a very macro level view of things it's like this i'm pretty sure that if you are doing cfa if you are if you have to do anything with core finance you would have heard of this term called business cycles what does it mean again a very very plain vanilla view of things it means that sorry it means that there is some fluctuation in the level of economic activity in plain simple terms you will tend to see that at some point of time the economy is doing really well and then after some time it tends to come down and then it bottoms out and then again starts going up and then it overheats and then again reaches the top and then it again comes down so there is a wavy cyclical pattern a zigzag sort of pattern a zigzag is not i mean uh, when i'm saying zigzag i don't mean to say a sharp zigzag like this but what i'm trying to say is that you will see that the economy tends to operate in a cycle there will be there will be times when things will not be doing great and then slowly and steadily things will start getting better things will start getting heated up and then when it gets over hot then again you will see it cool off again reach a bottom again uh, what do you call tend to heat again overheat and this cycle continues right this is called a business cycle meaning that the economy tends to have fluctuations in the level of economic activity it doesn't go steadily at this pace it doesn't go like that isn't it so before we get into the details let's understand four terms first of all this point number 1 or if i if i can show you over here let's just focus on 1 2 1 2 3 and then four this is the bottom most point and then you see an uptick then you see the top most point and then you see a downfall this bottom point is called a trough or a bottom this ride up is called expansion this top point is called the peak and then the downfall this is called the contraction right at this point of time i just wanted to say these four words in this video nothing more along with this let me say a couple of more things to you when i'm saying that there's a trough i can also say that this is the bottom most point the economy cannot go further down so this is where the recovery will begin this highlighted portion in blue in turquoise blue reflects expansion meaning the the days are getting better expected to go much better this point this green point this shows the peak this shows the peak now there's one good thing about the peak that you are at the highest level ever but then there's a bad thing as well that the economy has overheated things are only going down south from here and then there's this last phase of a downtrend which is called the contraction if the contraction is very strong this is going to be a recession or a depression if you will right so you you need to understand that there are these four terms you need to be on top of we are discussing the four phases of business cycle in this video let's start so the four phases are troughs or recovery the second one is expansion the third one is peak and the last one is contraction or recession now first of all if i talk about this first phase please note that the negative output gap is the highest in this in this phase what is the negative output gap the economy level at this point of time and the long term average trend level so this is the difference this is the difference because this because at this point of time the economy is doing worse than the long term average this is called a negative output gap similarly during peak it will be called a positive output gap which will be the highest during this time frame isn't it next talking about the recovery phase or the trough phase it's like this at this point of time the economy is at the bottom most level but there's a good news things can only go north from here so recovery has started what how will this be shown in in the data and the figures the gdp growth rate would transition from being a negative to a positive now business activity has started to pick up business activity has started to pick up isn't it what about the employment scenario in this case employment scenario is pretty simple things have started to pick up will you as a factory owner in order to ramp up your production have more labor in the play would you deploy more capital in the system 
would you have more resources to manufacture more the answer is no you would want to have better utilization of your existing resources itself if you have a labor staff of 100 folks which are working at a 6 hours per day capacity you would want to increase it to an 8 hour per day capacity you would want to utilize all the unutilized portion of their availability first and then move to the next uh, piece of labor to be hired from the market net new addition to your employee force at this point of time would be nil you would make the existing employee force work more right so what what will be the case for unemployment rate at this point of time the unemployment rate is more is 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 very high why because the economy is at the rock bottom piece is is it is at the rock bottom it please understand if this was the cycle and we are over here then the things have gone south things have gone really really bad in the past and that's why at this point of time the unemployment rate is pretty high and even though things are starting to recover you would not have more people in the fray you would make existing people work more at this point of time so there will be more overtime there will be more temporary workers even if if even if it is required meaning contractual labor and stuff which can be retrenched if if this uh, what do you call it? recovery in demand is not sustained isn't it Next, what will happen to spending? Because the economy has started to recover, the, cons the customer spending will tend to pick up. Customer spending will tend to pick up. What about inflation? So inflation is a lagging indicator. This will follow spending. This is a lagging indicator. This is a lagging indicator. So <clears throat> when will inflation move? It will, it will it will succeed or it will follow the spending component. So if this has started to rise now, inflation will start rising, but maybe after three months, six months, nine months time frame and stuff, depending on the length of the business cycle, isn't it? Next, how will the market perform in this scenario? The market performance is a leading indicator. The market per market performance is a leading indicator. So before you have hit a trough, let's read what it says. It says the equity markets will start to rise. Leading indicator. It's a leading indicator. Hence starts uptrend three to six months before economy begins to grow. Before economy begins to grow. When does the economy begin to grow? Economy begins to grow at this, at this juncture when it has hit a rock bottom. When it has hit a rock bottom, economy begins to grow after this. When, how will the equity market perform? Equity market will start performing better. Will start performing better at a much, I mean, much before the economy starts to do better, isn't it? Because please understand, people buy in the stock market today to reap the benefits tomorrow. So if the smart money, if the intelligent people in this in this economy tend to understand that we are probably just around the bottom being just around the bottom gives you a great margin for safety telling you that there's a good time to buy if you enter at the right point you will be able to enjoy the upside really really well and hence and hence the equity investors tend to jump in to buy things at a cheaper price think of the scenario that happened during covid times things were available stocks were available to the investors at practically 50 percent discount and the economy started sorry and the equity market started to dazzle and then even though there, there was nothing happening in the economy for next three to six months because of the covid lockdowns and stuff there was a rebound the economy started doing really well after three to six months. This, this is what this is what happened during the, the COVID times as well, isn't it? So this was about the, <clears throat> the trough or the recovery phase. Next, we are moving to the expansion phase. In the recovery phase, things had bottomed out and it, it had just started to show a few offshoots. In the expansionary phase, things have taken a strong, confident ride towards the the northern side so what will happen to the gdp growth rate it increases and it increases above the average growth rate so at this point of time you'll start finding that there's a positive output gap 
isn't it? The business activity has started accelerating. What was the employment scenario? The employment, the, the industry is at a hiring spree. Similar, exactly similar to what happened during COVID times, you can think of it. Just during COVID times, there was, there was absolutely hiring freeze. And then you saw that once the market opened up, there were there were hiring, there was hiring left, right, and center. People were getting very good offers. They were taking letter shifts and whatnot. Right. Next, what will happen to the unemployment rate? Unemployment rate will, will obviously fall. Unemployment rate will obviously fall because there, there's hiring spree. People want more, uh, what do you call, uh, labor. The, the prices are about to peak up. The manufacturers want to manufacture more. So they want to have more labor, more employees in the fray with themselves. So at this point of time, what will happen is that the, the investments in industry is also at an uptick. Simultaneously, the spending, the customer spending is also increased. What will be the effect of this? The, the inflation in the next in the next segment or in the next phase would be much high and accelerating, isn't it? What will happen to the equity markets? The, at this point of time, the, the economy is booming. There's exuberance in the market. Confidence is high, profit is high, growth is high, right? The, this, we are moving towards a bubble. We are moving towards a bubble. So that, that is what it is. Next, we have to discuss peak oblique slowdown. Peak oblique slowdown, meaning you have hit a top. From here, things can only go south. The GDP growth rate at this point of time has peaked out. There's no growth left. So GDP growth rate starts to decrease. Business activity starts to decelerate. Correct. What is going to be with the employment scenario? There's, there's still, there's, the hiring spree is still on, but it is actually pretty slow. Why is this the case? Because at this point of time, why, I mean, you might ask the question that why will someone hire at this point of time? Because the business manufacturers do not really know that this is a, there is a top or there can be further, uh, I mean, will it, will it curve go like this? Because in the previous piece, you remember I, I mentioned a word called exuberance. What is the meaning of this word called exuberance? Every manufacturer, everyone in the economy is in a lala land. They're thinking that this up ride will continue to occur. This will never stop. It will never stop. So what will happen to the hiring uh, spree or, or the hiring? The hiring will continue to happen, but it will it'll slow down slightly. Unemployment rate obviously decreases. What about spending? Because you have hit the top bottom, the income is not growing further. That's why as such, your spending will continue to increase, but at a very slow pace. So this is growing, but at a very slow rate. And because this is growing at a slow rate, what will be the impact? The impact will be that the inflation in the next leg, inflation in the next phase will be decelerating. Correct. What will happen to the equity market? You, the, the economy has, <coughs> has hit a top. The economy has hit a top. There's no, I mean, I mean, there's, there's, there's no steam left anymore to further sustain the market over here. So from here, the economy or the, the stock market performance is going to be negative because the stock market is going to be negative. There'll be fear in the investor's mind now. And that's why people will demand more return out of the equity market in order to continue to invest. So return and prices are inversely related because people will demand more return. The prices have to come down. So that is what will happen. The economy has hit a peak. Now the prices of equity index, equity stocks will come down because the stock and index prices will come down. The, the returns will tend to go up. So K and KD will rise. Why will KD rise? Because the, the, the sentiment has started to grow negative. The, the sentiment has started to grow negative. So the, the potential investors will demand more return out of their investments or else they will they'll prefer to not invest anything at all. In fact, in which avenues would the investors prefer to invest? The investors would not prefer to invest in 
the risky assets they would prefer safe assets what are the safe assets government t bonds these are the safe assets now because they want to invest in safe assets because they want to invest in safe assets what will happen is that the demand for the government bonds would increase the increased demand would make sure that the prices of the government bonds increase which will lead to the rates falling which will lead to the rates falling isn't it so you just mentioned that the rates are high this is at the initial phase this is at if i say this is at this phase around the peak the rates are high the the cost of debt rates are high and during the end of this tenure the cost of debt rates the cost of debt rates would be low why are the rates high during the initial phases because of the tight three monetary policy conditions because of the tight three monetary policy conditions because the because there is an uptick because there is an uptick there will be tight three monetary policy conditions so at this point of time the cost of debt would be high but because the investors are moving towards safe haven people will want to invest in what do you call people would want to invest in more government securities visa vis equity securities there will be more demand for uh, what do you call government securities more demand for government securities will lead to more price of government securities higher price of government securities would lead to lower yield of government securities so kd will tend to fall surely isn't it price rises rate falls right moving to the last phase that is the contractionary phase the economy has already seen its peak at this point of time the sentiment is genuinely negative in fact this is out of all the phases this is one phase where everything the where the sentiment is the worst people know that bad times lie ahead of them so at this point of time how will the gdp growth rate be it will be negative if there are two continuous Uh, what do you call uh, quarters of negative growth rate? This is called recession. What about the business activity? This has declined. What about the employment scenario? What about the employment scenario? Companies expect bad times ahead. So because companies expect to have bad times ahead, they will start retrenching their workforce at this point of time. They'll start retrenching. There will be a hiring freeze. <clears throat> what will happen to the customer spending surely it will fall right so home construction will fall business investments will fall construction the the consumer spending will fall what will happen to equity market equity market there are two point of views first of all because investors are looking i mean let, let's talk about equity market and debt market both because customers are looking for safe haven the customers would tend to invest in government securities right so because the because government security the, the investments in government securities is being done <clears throat> there will be high demand again similar story to this one there will be high demand prices are up the rates will be lesser so rd or kd will be lesser next what will happen to the equity investments it's like this as such investors would prefer to invest in debt government debt t bonds t bills the safest place where they can be sure that there'll be no defaults but then there's one other side to it as well the other side is that at this point of time the economy is doing bad as well there there's hiring uh, freeze salaries are a question mark long term job job sustainability is a question mark at this point of time investors or people at large would want to i mean explore other ways of earning so the marginal utility so the marginal utility of safe investment is also pretty high so if there can be equity investments which can give some bit of good return in the long term people will have a demand for that people will have a demand for that so the prices of large cap or the prices prices of safer stocks will see an uptick during this time frame right this was about the four phases of business cycle
Now in your books, there's a small discussion on inventory to sales ratio, and then there's a discussion on labor and capital utilization. As such, this discussion has been considered as an as a separate LOS, and that's why I'm also discussing it separately. But in my opinion, this this could have been discussed in the in the previous bit itself. But I mean, giving it the importance of a separate LOS probably tells me that this is something that Institute wants to be on to be you to be on top of. So let's let's have a look at it. So they're talking about inventory sales ratio. What will happen to inventory sales ratio during all these four time phases? Let's have a look at it. Inventory sales ratio. I mean, I, I think by nomenclature itself, it is pretty simple to you that what does this ratio mean? It means inventory divided by sales. That is it. Correct. Now, if I talk about, if I talk about this shape, what is happening during this time frame? Tell me there's a recovery. When there is recovery, what is happening is that the sales have started growing, but the production is still not there. The production is still not there. The inventory levels are more or less constant, isn't it? The inventory levels are more or less constant, isn't it? Because the, the inventory level is more or less constant, but there's bigger sales. So what will happen is that inventory over sales, just one sec. Inventory over sales. What has happened is that in sales has started to grow, but the inventory is more or less same. There's no, there's not much production, but the sales has increased. Because of the sales increase, the inventory will go down. The inventory is going down, the sales is going up. What will happen to the overall ratio? This ratio tends to fall. Fall vis-a-vis -vis what? So I'm saying that, first of all, let's assume that at, I mean, th there's a normal level of inventory sales ratio. There's a long term average of inventory sales ratio during the early phases of recovery. During the early phases of recovery, the sales is going to go up. The sales is going to go up. The sales is going to go up, but the inventory has, I mean, th there's not much production. So the inventory has dropped because of drop in numerator, rise in denominator, the whole ratio takes a fall. The whole ratio takes a fall. As a result, the inventory sales ratio drops in the initial phases of recovery or in the initial phases of expansion, isn't it? Next, as things tend to get better, what will happen is that the sales were already a plus. Now the production will start to go up. Now the production will start to go up. Impact is that at this point of time, there's inventory built up. Why? Because the manufacturer expects to have very good time in, in, in coming days. Just, just think of it in these terms. In, in my part of the world, in North India or in Central India, I've seen people hold a lot of stuff just before festivals like Diwali, Eid and Christmas. Why is that? Because they expect good times, very good sales, very good a throughput of people, very good walk-ins, isn't it? So what will happen is that these, these entities would continue to pile up a lot of inventory. Similarly, just before the Amazon Prime days, would Amazon not pile up a lot of stuff at their own? Would they not continue to accumulate a lot of stuff to have to make sure that on the Prime Day sale or on, on some big bonanza sale, they have they have a lot of customers who visit their websites and order a lot. The answer is very much yes. So at this point of time, you will start seeing that there's a lot of inventory built up. And then that's why there's, there's an uptick in the inventory to sales ratio. But this uptick is a planned one. The inventory has increased not by chance, but by design. So there's a planned increase in the inventory to sales ratio. Now, let's say this continues to grow up. Then just before the peak just before the peak you will tend to acknowledge that the sales growth is almost nil the sales has dried down the sales has flattened out it's as much as there was as it was there in the previous quarter or in the previous year or the previous month or whatever so the sales has gone constant but the sales has gone constant and because the sales has gone constant, there, there's not much uh, uptick, the economy, the, the inventory has piled up. So again, there's 
an uptick in the inventory to sales ratio. But this time around, there's an unplanned increase. There's an unplanned increase. Right. This will happen. This will happen just before the peak. This will happen just before the peak. Right. So this is this is how the inventory to sales ratio would be. Again, please understand that this ratio is a lagging indicator. This ratio will succeed or will follow what is going to happen in the economy. Sir, how are you saying that there is a lagging indicator? J just think of it in these terms. There is recovery happening over here. There is recovery happening over here. As such, when the recovery has started happening, the sales has started to grow, but the production is constant. When will the production move? The production will move later on. So the production will follow. And that's why this is a lagging indicator. Sir, why are you, why are you stressing on this fact? The, the last LOS of this, uh, what do you call, chapter discusses about the lagging indicator functionality, the leading indicator functionality and the coincident indicator functionality. So that's why I'm, I'm underlining the fact that income to sales, sorry, inventory to sales ratio is a lagging indicator. Similarly, equity markets are a leading indicator. Inflation is a lagging indicator. Unemployment is a lagging indicator because people will, what do you call, um, the manufacturer or the business owner will act on the basis of product or of the of, of production requirements. Next is labor and capital utilization. I think as such, we have discussed this piece any which ways, but I mean, just a small thing over here. We have, we have not called it out expressly. So before we even give it a read, let's just do one small thing. Let, let's just answer the small question that I'm going to ask. So let's say if there's a, if there's a recovery, recovery meaning is the beginning of expansion. If there's a recovery or the beginning of the expansion, and let's say there's there's good demand that is coming up from the market. I mean, let's say there, there are good sales, and then you have to ramp up your production as well. Would you hire new labor? The answer is no. Would you hire more or would you invest more capital? Capital meaning when, when I'm saying labor, I'm I mean labor itself, but when I'm saying capital, I mean the physical capital. Would I would I tend to buy more machinery as well? The answer is no. In fact, what would be done is that let's say there's a labor, let's say the average labor utilization per day at my end is six hours per day. I will probably ramp it up to eight hours per day. So I'll make sure that at the beginning of expansion, the use of labor and capital will be more extensive. Now, let's say at the beginning of contraction, things were at a high and then things have started going down south. This is the contraction phase. What will happen in this scenario? It's like this. Let's say the labor consumption is eight hours per day. Now, if the demand has fizzled out, would you just retrench the labor right away? Would you fire people right away? The answer is no. You would make sure that you decrease or you, I mean, instead of consuming eight hours per day from each labor, you start giving them six hours work per day and then two hours is left unutilized. So you will be using the same labor and same capital less intensively. Capital meaning the factory operations, the, the machinery less extensively. That's it. This is it. Okay. And, and the next piece was that if this trend persists, if the trend of an expansion or if the trend of the contraction persists, then what will happen? Then the firm will tend to adjust labor and capital over time. Meaning that if the market continues to heat up, then you will hire more labor, hire more capital. If the market continues to fizzle out, you would retrench labor, retrench capital. And that is if the persistence is there. If it is not, then I mean, obviously what we have discussed would apply. Right. So this was about labor and capital utilization as per the business cycle. We just discussed what business cycle was. Now we are about to discuss what credit cycle is. So what was business cycle? It was the measure of real GDP, the fluctuations in real GDP, the, the bottom, the rise, the top, 
and then the fall of the real GDP. Now we'll see what is the credit cycle. In credit cycle, we'll see the fluctuations in interest rates and availability of loans. Let's discuss in more detail. So it's like this. <clears throat> Sir, why, why is it important to discuss these two together? Because there are some bit of relationship between the two. It is like this. When the business is on an up move, at that point of time, the whole market is going hunky-dory. People expect things to go great. At this point of time, if you ask banks, they will say that we have a lot of comfort in the economy. We know that the businesses are doing well. So they are very happy to offer loans at lower interest rate because they have more certainty, more visibility of their funds coming back. So at this point of time, the interest rate is low and there's huge availability of loan. Now, once the cycle turns down south, the loans would be available at higher interest rate because now the banks become wary of the fact that there might be defaults. There might be defaults. So they are not offering loans to any one who is not having great credit history or they, they are having their checks and balances in place in a much more rigorous manner in comparison to that of the expansionary cycle. So during the contractionary phase, the interest rates are high and the availability of loans is low. So this is tightening of credit. This is loosening. This is loosening or expansionary. Right. Now, during expansion phase, what will happen is that because the interest rates are low, the consumers, the citizens of a country, the people at large, they will find opportunity. They will say, okay, why not borrow from the banks and then take this money and build up real estate assets at this point of time. So this will lead to formation of asset bubbles. Right. These were the three pointers. This was point number one. This was point number two. And this was point number three. I had obviously told you that these are related. The next question is that will this always be related? I mean, will this always will the direction of these two cycles, business cycle and credit cycle, will this always coincide? The answer is no. But in cases where they do coincide, in cases where they do coincide, what will happen is that the expansion will be much more stronger. The recession will be much more stronger. Bo so the impact is that if this is coinciding, then, then the business cycle, whatever business cycle is experiencing, let's say if it is experiencing recession, it will be deeper. If it is expensive, if it is experiencing expansion, then even that will be deeper and more stronger. Right. But I mean, surely there may be a case when they are, they are not coinciding. Sir, when would that happen? Please understand credit cycle, credit cycle tend to be much longer. Credit cycle tend to be much longer. Like in your books, they've given an example that in between 2007 to 2024, there have been probably one or two credit cycles, but there have been multiple business cycles. I have not given that, uh, what do you call, image over here. I mean, I've, I I could have snipped it or I could have used your books to provide that image as well. I, I didn't do that. Uh, I don't think it's important. It's just important for you to know that this would happen. I'll still give it a look from your C book and Choiser. And if it is required, it will be there in the notes once you once you have a look at it. But for your understanding, the fact that if you understand the fact that credit cycles tend to be longer i think you are good you you have complete understanding of the whole los nothing more to add last let's look at a few more aspects as such these are very very elementary more or less we've discussed a lot of this while discussing business cycle itself but i'll still want to uh, i mean get this out of my way by discussing things in black and white and making sure that you are on the on the right side of the exams it's like this consumer spending vis-a-vis -vis business cycle what will happen is that, okay, first of all, consumer spending, this is the largest component of GDP, right? It increases in expansions. You might remember it from this piece. It did increase during the expansions. Just one sec. It did increase during the expansions, isn't it? Next. They, your books talk about the sectors and their cyclicality. So whenever you talk about 
goods which are non discretionary in nature you will find there's no cyclicality in it or there's very less cyclicality in it right so non discretionary no ya less cyclical so let's let's discuss each aspect durable goods what are durable goods let's say washing machine tv these are durable goods so these are basically discretionary products so will this will this be cyclical the answer is very much yes people will be more interested to buy this when the economy is in a green swing when things are going great you will want to spend you will want to splurge but what about the non durable goods it is non cyclical meaning those goods which are more of the nature of defensive goods like grains rice veggies or anything which is which is compulsory for day to day living right next services services can again be discretionary and non discretionary non discretionary services as in like telco health insurance healthcare that's why non cyclical would you stop would you stop using your mobile phones if if uh, things are not going great economy wise the answer is no would you still go to a doctor if if the economy is is under stress the answer is very much yes but would you still plan your dubai trip your goa trip when the economy is not doing well questionable so discretionary services these are cyclical in nature right next discussing about the housing sector housing sector <clears throat> i think you already understand that this is highly cyclical you need to understand the impact of various factors on the housing housing sector if the mortgage rates are low we already discussed that if the mortgage rates are low the demand will be great so there is an inverse relationship if the income if the growth in economy is great if people are earning really well then there will be huge demand for housing sector and vice versa so there is direct relationship over here speculation let's say there is let's say this is the cycle we are talking about let's say you are over here i mean you you would obviously know that you are over here or not but let's say you know for a fact that the real estate prices increment was let's say 20% in last 6 months now you will have a fear you will have a fear of missing out right you will want to participate in this upside rally you will think that okay if you miss this you will not be able to gain as much as you should so this is what speculative income is so if you expect prices to increase or if you are in a speculative mode of mind then you will tend to make that purchase and further fuel up the prices it's not like you are the only einstein outside there so just like you have been thinking that let's invest in the markets other folks will also tend to think so because other folks will also tend to think so what will happen the the outcome will be pretty straight up simple people will say that okay let us invest in real estate everyone will go and buy real estate so the prices will go further up right next is demographic factors if the age bracket of i mean if if folks in the age bracket of 25 to 40 explode or rise the real estate prices are bound to increase typical case is that of india similarly strong population shift from rural areas to cities again classic case of indian economy people shifting from tier 3 cities urban uh, i mean from rural places to urban urban towns and stuff what will this lead to this will lead to more demand of uh, what do you call formal housing sector and the housing sector will tend to have a green signal a northern i mean a, a march towards the northern territory i mean the 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 prices would increase in, in plain simple language right next is external trade sectors external trade sector let's discuss so when i'm saying external trade sector we are basically discussing about exports versus imports again i think we've studied this multiple times what will be i mean what what are the factors affecting imports i mean first of all exports and imports both are impacted by the forex rates so let's take this classes classic case of india versus japan or rather let's take this case of Jap jpy versus usd now if you have a little bit of knowledge about what's happening in 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 the in the world of exports and imports 
Japanese cars tend to dominate the US economy. The Toyotas of the world, the Hondas of the world tend to dominate the US economy. Why is that? Because JPY is suppressed. There in fact have been a lot of claims. You can do some bit of Google around it. There, I mean, US government alleges that Japanese government actively participates in making sure that their currency is depressed. Why will that happen? Because if dollar one is equal to JPY five versus dollar one is equal to JPY five hundred, Japanese government would prefer this. Japanese government is a net exporter, and U.S. government, U.S. economy or U.S. country is a net importer. So now if Japan is a net exporter, what will happen to Japan is that if let's say the cost of a Japanese car is JPY 500,000, this is the cost of a car in Japan. Anyone who buys this car in Japan will pay 500,000, no difference at all. Let's say Japanese manufacturers are sourcing everything. Let's say this is the factory, raw material is all in JPY. This is all in JPY and then when this is being sold, let's say this is raw material, the payout is in JPY and when the cars are being sold, the, the inflow is either in JPY or it is in USD, right. So whatever happens to JPY this inflow this outflow and this inflow are not getting impacted but if somehow jpy jpy tends to be suppressed jpy tends to be suppressed i mean if i take these two cases in this case jpy is suppressed because one usd can buy more of jpy so jpy is having is is suppressed it is depressed it is it is less correct what will happen is that in this scenario if this is the rate then JPY 5 lakh will equal to dollar 1000. It will be equal to dollar 1000. So let's say if there's a car in Japan which costs 5 lakh JPY, it will cost just 1000 dollars in, in US. Versus if this would have been the rate, then JPY 5 lakh would have been dollar. 1 lakh right so which condition would be preferred by a u.s citizen u.s citizen will always prefer this so because jpy is suppressed there will be huge demand from u.s to buy this car because that this car is available at just dollar 1000 so that's i mean japanese government make sure that this phenomenon prevails and hondas and toyotas become cheaper for u.s folks in comparison to their General Motors car, right? If you simply think about it, for US people, if they are importing cars from Japan, they will have to pay Japanese yen. Now, if Japanese yen is depressed, they'll be happy because for them, Japanese yen is an outflow. If the if the outflow is depressed, if the if they have to make lesser outflow, then nothing like it. So. If you think from an economy's perspective, when will the imports rise? When will the imports rise? The imports will rise when? The imports will, in, th in this case, what is happening? In this case, okay, let, let's think in terms of exports once. Let's think in terms of exports one. Japanese government will prefer their exports to be bigger. So what will they do? To be the net, net exporter, they will say that, okay, let's suppress Japanese yen and then let's make sure that USD goes up. So for Japanese government who want their export to go up, they would want the foreign currency to go up. So when would the exports increase? When the foreign currency goes up. Similarly, when would the imports increase? When the domestic currency goes up. So I'm done with this and this piece. Regarding the income, when would the imports increase? When do you think the Indians would start buying Tesla? When the Indians are earning a lot. So when the domestic income increases.
इंडियन बाइज टेस्ला वेन ही इज रिच लेट मी जस्ट push all of this over here right and when will the when will the exports increase increase in exports let's say this is india increase in exports will happen when let's say india is exporting its goods to bangladesh when will bangladesh start to import more for us this is export for them it is import when will bangladesh tend to import more when bangladeshi is become more rich when bangladeshi income rises so when will indian exports go up when the foreign income rises when bangladeshi income rises bangladesh buys let's say bajaj when he is rich right i've i've explained the concept in 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 the terms of uh, what do you call forex already and uh, we'll be discussing that in topic 7 and 8 as well so i don't think it will be a challenge the these two pieces could have been a challenge so i've given you the example as well you'll find this in your notes when i upload this in the portal nothing more to add now going to the next bit we are discussing about economic indicators in this video so there can be three sorts of indicators the first indicator is called the leading indicator then you have coincident indicators and at the last you have lagging indicators as the name itself suggests what will happen is that leading indicators this will move before the economy has started to move coincident indicators i mean in this case the peaks and troughs i mean there will be coincidence between the indicator and the economy itself and then there are lagging indicators meaning that first the economy will move and then these data points will confirm that yes the economy has in fact moved i mean whether it's expansion or contraction does not matter what we are trying to say is that will we get the indication of an expansion of a recovery or of a contraction beforehand or will it be confirmed after the expansion has happened or will it coincide with the expansion or the contraction itself so these are the three indicators for the purposes of exam you need to be very sure of which indicator which indicator is leading which one is coincident and which one is a lagging indicator in the exam expect that they will give you a case study in which they will be mentioning about the fact that so and so stock prices moved then they will tell you about the fact that let's say inventory to sales ratio is so and so and then they will say that okay tell us is this a case of contraction or does it appear to be a case of expansion and then you'll have to apply yourself thinking that okay stock market indicators i mean stock market was a leading indicator so if if nifty has moved if s&p 500 has moved it will move before the economy has started moving second you'll tend to think that okay if inventory to sales ratio has moved in such a manner you you have to know that this is a lagging indicator so long story short you need to be 100% sure about the nature of each of these indicators right now without further ado let us discuss each of these indicators in detail let us first start with leading indicators discussing leading indicators in this video the first leading indicator is stock market what does it mean it tends to say that when the economy is not doing well but the expectation about it is going to be positive let's say the the economy at this point of time is at this point is at this point so it's at its trough now once the recovery has started to begin you will notice that the stock market will start moving before the economy has started moving because in the stock market when people when the informed investors are buying they expect good days to come and that's why they start buying and when they start buying the market tends to make an uptick when the market tends to make an uptick this will this will precede the real economic gdp uptick so let's say economy gdp will start to go positive at time t whereas the stock market 
will start to show positive signs from t minus 6 months itself stock market will precede the economic real cycle that is what it is trying to say next house prices retail sales similar explanations let's say the economy has not been doing great housing market has not been doing great now once the economy starts to recover even before that you will see that house prices have started to increase leading to a sign that people have gained confidence in the market they expect the prices to go up so they are trying to buy things at a cheaper stuff at this point of time making sure that the inventory the old past inventory that was there that gets liquidated and they get entry into the real estate segment at a lower price right then you have retail sales yield spread we'll, we'll have a look at this in detail in a short while building permits building permits what 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 is the meaning of the word building permits when the economy is going to go good at that point of time you will find that a lot of builders are applying for new projects during bad phases the no one is interested in in getting into real estate no one is interested no builder is interested in building new projects and bringing new inventory to the market but before even the market has started to do well you will find that a, build, a lot of builders will come up and start taking permissions to build new uh, buildings next consumer expectations self explanatory i'll say average weekly average weekly hours of manufacturing J just keep this pending for a little while keep manufacturers new orders also pending for a little while we are going to have a look at this in very very great details let's look at it now average weekly hours is this a leading indicator very much yes so what will happen is that when the economy has started to do well think of it for this time when the economy has started to do well when the economy is in the recovery phase what will happen is that <clears throat> the sales have started to come up the sales have started to come up and hence there will be slight demand built up demand as well will the manufacturer immediately start hiring more people the answer is no the manufacturer will look to in to utilize the excess capacity that was there or make sure that he offers work over time to its workers make sure that he has temporary workers sir why is that because at this point of time you have just started to see the recovery you don't know if this if this recovery will in will in fact lead to an up cycle or this is just a momentary pass away sort of thing you don't want to commit to an extra labor or you don't want to make a long term hit on your income statement by having more workers in the fray and then what if the demand goes down so at this point of time there's not enough confidence when the recovery started to happen at that point of time the manufacturer will want to have increase in the total work time by number of hours without increasing the headcount so the the manufacturing consults will make sure that their each worker is working more number of hours and not have more number of workers in the fray next it says average weekly initial claims for in unemployment insurance so it's like this let's say the economy has started to suffer or the the or let's say bad days are are uh, just about to be there for an economy at this point of time you will start seeing layoffs you will start seeing layoffs exact opposite is the case when you are you are about to see good days at that point of time you will start seeing rehirings so both in both of these cases the insurance claims would be immediately impacted so this is also a leading indicator next manufacturers new orders for consumer goods and materials new orders would definitely throw a lot of light on how the economy is going to be isn't it next again ism new order index you don't you don't need really need to get into the details of what each of these indexes mean and the definition and stuff but you you definitely need, you definitely need to understand that new orders new orders will see an uptick and this will be a leading indicator next building permits for new housing private units we we have we have already studied this that new construction is definitely a green signal for very very good days about to be there next snp 500 index just call it equity index 
this is a leading indicator there is a leading indicator if the economy anticipates good days then the the stock market will have an uptick immediately leading credit index next is leading credit index what does it do it shows you the strength of the financial systems strength of the financial system right next one is yield spread yield spread curve so what does this say it says that interest rate between 10 year treasury and overnight borrowing rate so practically it says long term minus short term rates long term minus short term rates so let's say this is this is term and these are the rates this is short term this is long term as such this rate as such in general long term rates would be more than the short term rates so if if you are going to find rlt and this is rst if you plot difference in rates if you plot different in rates and time along with it time along with it right what will happen is that in general long term rates are more than the short term rates so this will be positive this will be positive right there can be times when this rate is actually inverted the yield curve is actually inverted so the short term rates are more than the long term rates in this scenario what will happen is that the change in rate if if i plot change in rate against the time if i plot change in rates against the time this rate would this this curve would look yeah this curve would look like this because what is going to happen is that this curve would either be inverted this curve would either be inverted or i mean this this can this will either be flat or can be inverted as well inverted suggesting that the long term rates are lesser than the short term rates and straight curve suggesting that the long term rates are equal to the short term rates so if there is an inverted curve or there is a flat curve it reflects that recessionary environment is there whereas this one suggests that these are normal times right this was about the yield spread curve this is the yield curve and this is the yield spread curve just a sec next is consumer expectations i again think this is this is self explanatory if the consumer expectations i mean if there's optimism in in the consumers mind they'll increase spending and vice versa isn't it so this was all about leading indicators we'll we'll look at the coincident coincident indicators next we are discussing coincident indicators now it's like this if leading indicators were forecasting then this piece is now casting meaning that if you look at the indicators in this scenario and analyze those would you be able to be in a position to tell what will happen in the economy tomorrow the answer is no because leading indicators serve that purpose now what is going to happen is that you can just confirm what you analyzed through leading indicators using coincident indicators now that's it nothing else so let's let's have a look at it what are the sort of indicators that are there <clears throat> there's industrial production index meaning it will tell you the current manufacturing level and growth from the previous period then you have real personal income you will have a look at the personal income of the citizens of a particular country of of people at large and and try to analyze is it <clears throat> is it better than previous years or is it better than previous time periods or not next manufacturing and trade sales if if the manufacturing is is in green if the manufacturing cycle is going well then you will tend to say that you expect the economy to do well isn't it <clears throat> next employee on non farm payrolls this is a very very important indicators what is it telling you so basically over here 
you have employment report you have employment report of i mean basically non uh, of non military folks basically employment report of non military folks so if in general the economy level in the if if the employment level in the economy is good you will tend to say that you expect the economy would also be doing pretty fine so these are the coincident indicators meaning that these indicators will coincide with the business cycle tops and bottoms peaks and troughs isn't it so this was about coincident indicators we'll be discussing lagging indicators next let's discuss lagging indicators now lagging indicators meaning those indicators which tend to follow the business cycle tops and bottoms right the first lagging indicator is average duration of unemployment or the unemployment rate it's like this as i said during the leading indicators if you look at the number of hours if you look at the number of hours it's a leading indicator but if you look at the unemployment piece that's a lagging indicator now let's analyze in detail why is that the case let's say the economy has just started to recover will the manufacturing concern hire more people to make sure that the manufacturing capacity the, that the manufacturing demand is met the answer is no it will make its existing uh, i mean existing workforce work more do a lot of overtime but if it continues to sustain then what will happen then the manufacturer will tend to have more people as their as as his or her or once employee or uh, what do you call wage earner isn't it so employment is something that will be a lagging indicator because <clears throat> as soon as there is a built up of demand the first utilization will be of the current labor itself if you are moving to the next segment of having new labor or i mean uh, what do you call firing up the existing labor then it will always be a lagging thing because it's a step 2 at step number 1 you will tend to fill the unutilized hours of the existing employees or retrench back some of the hours of the existing employees in case of a bad time coming up so let's say economy has just started to recover there are 100 employees each working 6 hours what you will do is you will ask sorry there is a tech glitch let's move ahead next point was inventory to sales ratio inventory to sales ratio we have discussed this multiple times not going to repeat it next is change in unit labor cost if the per unit cost is changing this is also a lagging indicator because of the because of the change in the variable cost isn't it next is inflation again i discussed it over here in the business cycle aspect that inflation is something which which follows the spending part that's why this is also a lagging indicator next you have average prime lending rate or the prime rate if i can say so prime rate this is the rate charged to the customers rate charged to prime customers on loans right next you have ratio of customer installment debt to income i think this is this is self explanatory it's like this if you find a ratio between customer installment to debt it's pretty straight <clears throat> sorry to income it's pretty straight forward let's say if the economy has taken a downturn the econ the the income would have gone down but installment is something that is a result of your past loans now you would have taken loans during good times this will continue to bite you even during the bad times so this remains constant this falls down so overall this ratio goes up so if this ratio is going up or going down vice versa would have been the case let's say during good times so let's say if if i talk about the case where 
let's say your income has increased suddenly let's say you are in this category and you have come from this recovery and then expansionary phase at that point of time the income was low now the income has increased but during this time frame you would have taken lesser lo loans making sure that the installment doesn't bite you a lot and it remains constant so this remains constant this tends to rise overall the ratio tends to fall so these this this makes sure that the ratio of customer installment debt to income when this there's a transition in this ratio th this is definitely a lagging indicator the, na the last one is commercial and industrial commercial commercial and industri and industrial loans outstanding loans so what what business owners do is that during good times they tend to take a lot of loan so let's say if they are at the peak if they are at the peak they'll continue to take some loans if they are at the bottom if they are at the bottom what will be the scenario it will be exact opposite so what i'm trying to say is that a business owner would not be willing to take a loan at this point of time but as soon as there is recovery the the, the business owner will start taking the loan so a business owner will take the loan after seeing the recovery after seeing that there's an uptick and and so on and so forth so if 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 i say that this is a lagging indicator it will it will make complete sense isn't it why is this a lagging indicator because practically the loans are being taken in order to make sure that the the production facilities keep functioning well to make sure that the inventory build up is done well isn't it that's it at my end as far as this chapter was concerned.